Tanatato te whanau, ko Kirinyaga te maunga, ko Nile te awa, ko Indian Ocean te moana, ko Edmund Hillary Fellowship te waka, ko Calhoun te iwi, ko Dorothy Koenig and Helen Johansson toko tupuna, ko Ellie Calhoun ingoa, Tanakoto, Tanakoto, Tanakoto Katoa. I want to thank the people and the government of New Zealand and the Edmund Hillary Fellowship on behalf of all of the fellows for making this possible. It's truly a dream come true. And I'm looking forward to sharing what I'm working on right now, but of course the seeds for what I will be working on here are just being planted. So as a bit of an introduction, my background is in humanitarian aid and international development. I grew up as the daughter of humanitarian aid workers, so we talked about social justice at the dinner table pretty much every night. And I'm really grateful for that. It gave me a strong awareness of disparity and of the impact that unequal systems have on health, on education, on people's futures, and a strong desire to disrupt those systems and make better ones, because these systems are agreements between us all. So one of the things I love to do is use tools to amplify change, and technology is exactly that. So um, over the course of the last 10 years, I've been privileged to work with UN organizations, governments from Sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East, and a range of partners to amplify really amazing solutions for change. They aren't my solutions, I didn't invent them, but I, I am um, able to listen and able to create platforms, could and co-create with a wide range of stakeholders. So I'm gonna take you through a quick tour of what those are. Um, and of course, these are some of the principles that we've come up with to not fail so much when we try to do that. There's a tremendous amount of, of failure to listen in many industries that are trying to help people. Uh, and I think that's a really important thing to acknowledge. The other thing I want to point out is open source. You're going to hear me talk a lot about free and open and how these solutions that we scale are free and open. And that's one of the things that we really think social change should be, open sourced and available to all. So um, these are my stakeholders. Uh, I built them an app. Well, many of us built them an app. Um, but they're members of self-help groups. And, and these are members of self-help groups in Congwa District in Tanzania. It's a food insecure region. But it turns out, well, first of all, it turns out microfinance is actually really terrible for the poorest of the poor. It's an amazing intervention um, when you're ready for it at a certain socioeconomic level. But receiving external capital involves risk and collateral. And that is really not appropriate for the poorest of the poor. The poorest of the poor, it turns out, if you use a different model, they can lift themselves out of poverty. And, and I know that this can sound a bit challenging um, because it's a bottom-up approach. So I want to acknowledge bottom-up approaches also need top-down approaches. The way that we change things is not just from the grassroots. We really do need change from both sides of the system. But turns out self-help groups are different than microfinance in a few key ways. Namely, there's no external capital. These mostly women, although they do let some men in because they really want in, so sometimes they're like, all right, you can come, but only one of you. <laughs> They've saved together meager amounts of money. But over time, that grows, and that capital is what propels their business. And they stay together over decades. And talk to me about this model more if you like. But what we decided to do was to take that model and standardize it into an app. So the person you see holding the tablet has a primary school education. His name is Damani. And he is leading five self-help groups in his community because we've been able to standardize the self-help group process, appify it, if you will, and create a job aid for him and for the other government and organization um, supported facilitators who run these groups around the world. And so we're working in India, across Sub-Saharan Africa, starting to work in the Middle East, Latin America, and the Caribbean with that project as well. So really cool thing is it allows people like Asgard, who you see smiling in the middle, to create change in their communities. Asgard is a lot like us, went to school, went to university, got a good job, but he wants to help the community. So he's at the forefront of helping us figure out how we can use technology appropriately in these communities. So I wanna be really clear, the people doing the hard work are people like him. These are the people that we're building for. I think that's really cool. So the other thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch because there's two more projects. So the transition between them isn't seamless, but something else that really makes me angry is sexual violence. And one in four women um, are sexually assaulted in their lifetime. The, the number is actually higher, depending on what community you're looking at. This is something that affects all genders. 
And actually, it turns out, if you are able to go to the hospital in those few days or, or even hours after this crime has been committed, you have a much better likelihood of getting on with your life. And that includes things not just like, oh, you, you may receive post-exposure prophylaxis for HIV to prevent that happening, but actually so, um, psychosocial support. And, and that means that the incidence of anxiety, of post-traumatic stress, of suicidal ideation, of depression is dramatically re reduced with um, an intervention that is only a few hours and that really anybody can do. But how scary to try to do that if you don't have training. And I can tell you, having supported survivors, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not that effective because all you want to do is do no harm. So what we've done is standardize and appify um, the rape crisis counseling training that is given around the 300 or so rape crisis centers that exist in the world. It's really not quite meeting the need. And to bring that to free and open source platform so that anyone who is unfortunately in this position can train themselves to become an advocate or to be an advocate in the moment to access this in-hand resource at the health center. Or um, if you're a survivor on your own, that's there for you too. So that you're not alone in, in, that, in that moment, so that you know what to do to navigate a system that is quite frankly against you, that quite frankly sees the crime that's happened to you as your fault. So we're changing that. And it's not just an app, there are many of us who are working on this problem. We need a lot of support for this platform and for the next one too. This was the view outside my house in Liberia. And uh, it was really useful. I love looking at this picture because you can see the barbed wire. It reminds me what disparity is and who we need to be building for and that we cannot close our eyes to this kind of thing. It's easy not to see. We started a social enterprise in Liberia. That's my house under the tree. We did live in a little tent every weekend for a couple of years. But it wasn't enough to try to do community-led ecotourism businesses because what happened was Ebola. It destroyed everybody's hard work after a decade plus of civil war. And that was awful for everybody, but especially for the people there who had already been through so much. So um, a good friend of mine created a culturally appropriate group trauma intervention with no drugs, no therapy, no what happened to you, tell me what happened, none of that. It is over 80% effective at reducing symptoms of post-traumatic stress and depression. People are going back to work. People are reducing drug dependency. The effects are amazing, but it's really hard to get support for this kind of platform. So it's one of the things I'm grounding here. And I wanted to just say thank you so much to everyone for bringing me here. I wanted to close by saying we'll be basing ourselves in Tehiku in the far north and to see what seeds grow from there. Kia ora. Thank you.